It's my pleasure to welcome everyone to the newest interview in a special series highlighting the INFORMS communities, which are comprised of special interest sections, societies, forums, and chapters. In this interview, we'll be taking a look inside one of the INFORMS societies, the largest of the INFORMS communities that each focus on a common area of interest within the study or practice of operations research, data science, analytics, and more. These interviews explore a specific society's unique focus and activities, as well as the latest advancements and trends in the communities they represent. I'm joined today by Jan Fabian Emke, professor with the University of Vienna and the president of the INFORMS Transportation Science and Logistics or TSL Society, which provides the INFORMS community with a sustained specialized focus on all topics of transportation science and logistics. Jan, thank you so much for providing a look inside the TSL Society today. To start, could you share how you became involved with the Society and what your current role is? Yeah, hello everyone. And uh, first I would like to thank uh, Tracy and her team for having me today to talk about transportation science and logistics, one of the bigger societies and in the INFORMS community and uh, also giving the, the audience some inspiration about what it's worth to be a member, not only in the INFORMS community, but especially in the TSL society. So yeah, when I think back, what was my first contact with INFORMS? And I really have to go back, I think about 10 years to an INFORMS annual meeting. I think it was in Phoenix, Arizona in 2012, where I, where I visited as a postdoc and I went to the business meeting and to talks of the annual meeting, and I was totally impressed by the, by the enormous breadth and also seeing all that famous colleagues, all those authors from papers I, have, I had read before. Yeah, and so that was my first contact, and I thought, that's so great. I mean, I went to conferences in, in Europe before, also big conferences, but this informs annual meeting that was special to me. And it was my first time getting in touch with many famous colleagues and authors in the US. And so I was really motivated to get in touch with, with colleagues uh, around the globe. Yeah, and so I continued, I think I, I went to every annual meeting that was on site till COVID came in uh, until 2019, yeah. And so visited the annual meetings, went to talks, um, but also never missed a business meeting. So that was the most important part to me as a young researcher looking for a career, you know, thinking about a career in science and getting in touch with, with more senior people for advice and for, for, for exchange on, on the things I would be interested in. So, and then at some point I thought, okay, this was so motivating. Maybe I can also support this society by giving back by organizing something and actually in 2015 I was a co-organizer of a transportation science and logistics workshop in Berlin Germany and that was co-organized with Anne Campbell from the University of Iowa and with Catherine Cleofas from the University of Kiel and the three of us we were really motivated to bring the TSL informed spirit to Europe to Germany and this was a big thing to us yeah and so that was, I think, a big success. It was one of the largest workshops TSL have ever organized. And then I really thought, OK, how can I support further? And I was asked to become TSL communications chair. And I think that's a good role to get involved in all kinds of things. But you don't have to decide everything on your own if you're new. You can just give your feedback. You can just take part in discussions, also from a young researcher's point of, pers uh, of perspective. And so I was communications chair for a couple of years, trying to improve the web page, trying to, to foster the, the Twitter ch channel. And since uh, this year, I am in the role, I'm serving in the role of the TSL president. Yeah. And as a TSL president, um, I think it's, it's a fancy name, but actually you, you are responsible for, for running the society in the end, for organizing discussions also for motivating others to follow maybe my path or find their own path to volunteering yeah, for, for board positions or simply to submit abstracts to, to the annual meeting. Yeah? Also to be on award committees and uh, to, to get the whole idea rolling, keeping it 
modern and keeping it open and diverse. And this is the role I'm currently serving and uh, as a GSL president, so I was asked, I think, going back to 2020, because you are elected as president-elect, obviously, in 2021, then you become the actual president. And in 2020, that was after the first lo lockdowns and so on. And at that point, I said, OK, we need to think about how we want to communicate in the future, how we can create value for our members, even if it's not through physical annual meetings, which were more or less impossible in 2020. And how, what do we want to keep from the COVID times? What do we want to keep from digital meetings? And what do we want to get rid of as quickly as possible? And how can we meet in workshops and annual meetings again? And I think this is my big, let's say, agenda um, but again being the president means running the society getting the awards out communicating with the wonderful informed st uh, stuff and um, making the next meetings worthwhile for all the members and I think this is a role I enjoy a lot and I enjoy a lot all the feedback and communications I can have within my community and also with uh, informs people to get all those issues running. Now, within the society, there are five special interest groups. Could you share a bit about these interest groups, their role, and how the society came to identify these areas in particular? Yeah, actually, I'm proud of our um, five special interest groups because this is where the experts really work and where the experts really motivate each other and organize specific workshops, uh, talks, et cetera, et cetera. So there is a bit of history behind all of these interest groups and I want to underline that we are we, we have these five interest groups but we are always flexible to close one and to open another one based on our members interests yeah so I would say those interest groups are the most flexible tool you can have it's not it's formal but it's it, it doesn't require much formalism to get those set up yeah so and I would say to to, to keep the long story short the idea is that in such a big society like TSL, and we roughly have about 1,000 members, um, everyone should feel at home. Yeah, of course, in the diversity of research, but also in personalities. And so we wanted to promote activities within major areas of application. Yeah, and in uh, logistics and transportation. Um, we, with the help of our members, identified these five areas and let's go through them maybe quickly because I'm not sure if everyone knows already what those special interest groups do and what they work with. So we have um, colleagues who work in the area of air transportation. Yeah? And of course, what do you do in air transportation? You think about how do you plan and operate airports? How do you operate an airline company? Air traffic control is a big thing. Um, how do you to, to how do you make uh, reliable flight schedules, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And what about the future of aviation? Yeah, what about new technologies and how to apply um, operations research methods and uh, data analytics methods to those new technologies? So this is the home of colleagues who really uh, investigate applications in air transportation. Um, this is, by the way, not my field or my special area, but I'm at home more or less in the freight transportation and logistics, SIG. And of course, uh, this is one of our biggest SIGs uh, where we think about, again, technology. What is the future of, of trucking, rail, shipping, air cargo, and intermodal transportation? Yeah, And here also, in, in, in recent years, we have seen the, the rise of data and more data that describe how our technologies work, how customers work, where demand will be. And this is an example of topics in, in this area. We also have a tradition and an interface to, uh, to engineering a little bit in, 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 uh, in TSL, not only a little bit, but actually we are proud of having also those civil engineers that are interested in urban transportation planning and modeling. Yeah? So it's not always about a single company's view, but also about public authorities, like how do you organize urban traffic for the whole society? How do you optimize infrastructure investments? How do you organize goods movement? 
And this is what I really love to look at those questions from different perspectives. So what is the society's or the pol politician's perspectives on urban transportation? And what is the individual company's perspective? And it's not always the same, naturally, because if we minimize um, uh, costs, then that might not be beneficial to society, for example. Yeah. So you can really play around with that. And I really love these, these ideas of shared mobility, uh, intelligent transportation systems and uh, how we can bring together all of this with data analytics. Then number four is facility logistics. And this is a traditional um, um, logistics for manufacturing, distribution and service facilities. So this has a long tradition in our society. And this is also from a business perspective, something where you really need to look at operations, really need to handle information on material and information flows, and really look at supply, chain, supply chains to, to make them work well. Last but not least, technology comes into the game uh, again, intelligence transportation systems. It's also an interface to engineers sometimes who develop all those data collection technologies, for example. And this uh, SIG addresses uh, dynamic traffic assignment, traffic flow, impact of uncertainty, and information on traffic systems. Yeah. So, and here we have this wonderful, also new ideas of bringing learning into optimization of on reacting real time to sensor data. And this is really something I've enjoyed a lot to take part in those discussions. Yeah, so this was a very quick overview of what we talk about in the different special interest groups, but let's look also at what the value is for INFORMS and for, and for the Transportation and Logistics Society as a whole. And you see that when you look into the INFORMS annual meeting program that we organize our sessions according to these six. Yeah. So when you submit an abstract to the annual meeting, you will be asked, where does this fit? And then we have the um, SIG board who really think about where does this fit? Or is, the, is it not a good fit? Or is it a general topic? And they really help organizing this big annual meeting with dozens of sessions in a way that it makes sense to, to, to colleagues. Yeah. So when you are interested in urban transportation, you know you go to room whatever 75 and you will find talks only on, on this topic for the next three days. And this is what I enjoyed. It can be overwhelming to go to your first INFORMS annual meeting, but if you found your room or your floor, you know this is where my friends, where my colleagues, where the experts are. And if you are new in this area, you better stay here and you get a state-of-the-art overview. And this is once again, making TSL a home it's big, it's broad, it's excellent, but it's also or it's also expected to make you feel at home in your area. And I think that our six um, are really our special interest groups. I always call them six. Yeah, um, they they play a big role in 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 making everyone feel at home. Last issue or last last uh, role of the six is they also help us with uh, award committees. So when we have, for example, a special or the best paper award, and we have a best paper award by the whole society, but we also ask the six, oh, we have an honorable mention here. Would you think that would be a good represent of, or it would represent your sick very well? And if they say yes, we also give out or hand out awards um, on behalf of the six. Yeah. So to make them seen a little bit more, and to make their accomplishments be valued by the whole society and maybe even by the whole INFORMS community as well. So tell us a bit about the members of the TSL Society. What kind of work are they involved in? Yeah, so I wouldn't even just call them members, but most of them I would call friends or, or colleagues in the, in the TSL Society. And we, we have a large chunk of members from industry, yeah? so. And this is, I think, no surprise that we have members who work at USPS or at DHL or at Amazon who apply the newest technologies and who really tell us in academia. So I'm a professor, of course, I'm in academia, who give us inspiration for future optimization problems or for more realistic challenges. Yeah. So on the one hand, I would say we have this industry representation. And on the other hand, we have, of course, professors of 
supply chain management, of civil engineering, of business analytics like myself, and we all come together. And not to forget, we, it's not all about the seniors who have a career in industry and academia, but also about all the PhD students who are members, yeah, who are young members of our TSL society who try to explore what interests them, what they find, what might be helpful for their future career and what really is, is, is helping them in, in build a career. So those are, I would say, the, the majority of the members, but not to forget there are editors of established journals, especially of our flagship journal, Transportation Science, um, who, who built a society, who talk to our other members to figure out what is the state of the art, which paper goes into Transportation Science and what are our expectations yeah so the whole discussion about more and more data about what is analytics and how can transportation and analytics benefit from each other uh, is a big discussion between all our members yeah and our members more or less are, are they contribute to annual meeting presentations they host tsl workshops and conferences they support us in as being representatives in award com uh, committees and simply by defining problems and doing research. And I'm really proud of all the members that we have and all the interesting discussions that we will have in the future as well. So a significant number of TSL Society's members are students. Um, how does the society help cultivate relationships between these student members and those who are more established in their careers? And why is that important? So generally, um, it's important to integrate students and to have them communicate with the more senior members easily, right? So we think that by um, enabling communication through Twitter, for example, through our new blog on the website. So, so recently we replaced our, our standard newsletter by a blog. So we have more flexible communication and more, let's say, communication without big barriers. We hope that we can interest the new members in communicating with the seniors and that it's also um, or that they feel invited to discuss with the more senior members. So this is one thing we try to do in the virtual space in the annual meeting, informs annual meeting, our business meeting is I think the key for every young member to be introduced to the society, to get in touch with um, uh, senior or more established members. And this is how I came to, to, to informs to TSL as well, right? And I will never forget this. And I also try to, to make this happen for, for new members. Yeah, to exchange ideas at the annual meeting and also get in touch with those authors that you have just read about and here you can see them in uh, in real life what we try to do is one big um, program is offering grants especially the cross-regional doctoral grant and at the moment when you apply successfully you get a grant of two thousand us dollars and it's meant to to go to a different country, to a different professor, to meet with somebody else ex except your supervisor, um, to become more visible, to think about new problems and to foster your PhD student career. Yeah. So this is one thing, and I just wanna uh, underline this, chances are at the moment not so small to get this grant because I, I don't know why, but maybe it's um, in the aftermath of COVID travel restrictions and so on. It's, it's hard to think about traveling somewhere where you don't live and where you don't know what the situation is, but always give it a try. We are always flexible in postponing activities if, if it's not possible to travel at some point. But this cross-regional doctoral grant is specifically made for our younger um, uh, TSL Society members. Then, of course, we want to improve visibility by offering awards uh, by the, especially the best dissertation prize. Yeah, that is, I think, one of the most prestigious awards in this area. And we are still working on new ideas like um, best young paper award. Yeah, this is not official yet. It's not formalized yet, but we are working on that behind the scenes and maybe we get it out and active for next year. So watch out for our announcements. 
um, but their uh, formalism and regulations will be very strict and it will only be allowed if you are a young first author that you can participate in this award to improve your visibility, to help you create your career and to help you improve your networking issues. Last but not least, once in a while, we always have special workshops that are targeted at PhD students and where you can talk to more senior people to get career advice. And we also think about of making that a little bit more um, systematic and permanent. So what is there already to sum it up? Watch out for the cross-regional doctoral grant and watch out for the best dissertation prize. This is already there. And from next year, I'm quite positive that we will also have a young uh, author best paper award. In addition to growing connections and opportunities for student members, are there additional efforts to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion within the society? So I think um, those DEI related questions are something that is in everyone's mind working in, in informs in the whole informs community these days. And our first step was to have us to have an ad hoc DEI committee. I think that was two years ago that would look over our calls for papers and how to change them or calls for awards, yeah, award submissions to make them more inclusive and to foster equity in all areas of TS, of the TSL society. So as a result, we really made our calls for open positions on the board, for example, much more inclusive, uh, letting everyone know what, what is the minimum requirement, uh, making clear that you don't have to be an, an established researcher for, for some board positions, but that everyone can actually use these board positions to build their career, to get in touch, uh, whether you're female, male, or whatever, yeah, what career level you're working on. So, so this was um, more, let's say, an ad hoc committee, and I'm pretty sure that we will um, decide to have a board position, maybe a specific board position or a combined board position from next year on that is um, transforming this ad hoc at activities in, in, into something more systematic. What we have done this year is we have changed all the or our PNPs um, to to with regard to award committees according to informed standards, I would call it, yeah, so that, that it's clear how the award committees will be assembled and how DEI issues will be considered when creating award committees, yeah. So this is now standard in all TSL society awards. Um, in the most recent award that we just created this year, I think I will talk about this um, a little bit later more. And um, as I said, we want to, work on including these DEI topics into an official officer role next year. So it's not always ad hoc or uh, depends on one board member to bring that up, but that we have one person who makes sure that we have diversity, equity, and inclusion within all the things we decide about and in all committee meetings, et cetera, et cetera. What other kinds of activities or events does TSL hold for its members as well as the INFORMS community? Yeah, to go back to the beginning, I would call it the standard activities or events are, of course, attached to the annual meeting, the INFORMS annual meeting. Yeah, we will have dozens of sessions, or we always had dozens of sessions, and we will have great award sessions and business meetings, and everyone is invited uh, beyond being a member of the TSL Society. Um, but in addition to that, we offer more or less once a year, a TSL workshop on specialized, specialized topics. And they were recently organized in Norway. In Norway, it was in, in, in May this year. And in India, it was in December last year. And those are rather small workshops with about 40 to 80 uh, attendants. And they are usually, I call it, related to hot topics. Yeah. So specialized workshops, not as broad as uh, uh, sessions during the annual meeting, but here we really talk about on, on, on hot topics in the special sick areas or things that people want to start with and invite maybe practitioners, bring together academia and industry. And what we also do is these TSL workshops, they travel around the world. As you just saw, I told you they were in Norway and India um, recently. 
And that's what they are meant to be, to include experts from all around the planet. So this is what we offer every third year. And this is quite recent. We have our own TSL conference in addition to the annual meeting. And every third year, this will be somewhere in North America. So while the TSL workshop travels around the planet and is targeted at experts in a specific sub area, the TSL conferences should bring together all our members and friends who will become members and they will be at an accessible location in North America. So the heart of TSL will always be within forms in North America. So this is the idea. And it will be accessible in terms of flights, in terms of um, fees and price. Yeah. So, so to, to, to host it at a university, for example, so we can keep fees quite, quite low. And here, the difference to the annual meeting is that it's here more on uh, let's say research in the last stage. So at the annual meeting, you can also present first ideas and get feedback. And here it's more like, what is the outcome of a three year or four year PhD project, for example. So this is what we have. Uh, what was born during COVID times were online TSL research talks. And we have a research series or a webinar series that will continue to the end of this year. And we just, uh, we will uh, analyze how this works and if people still enjoy additional online meetings or not. Yeah, so we are flexible uh, and think about maybe continuing that next year as well. But uh, this is where everyone can just click onto a Zoom link and hear the newest insights into some hot topic around the planet. Um, I told you already about this um, grants for research and networks so the cross-regional doctoral grant, but there's also a version for everyone, postdocs or more established researchers, and we call it networking grants. So you can also go to the web page and found, uh, find out more about these. And the basic idea is that people meet who haven't collaborated yet. Yeah, so someone from North America with someone from Asia or from Europe, and you want to start a new collaboration, maybe you have two different research areas and you want to combine them and we are happy to help with getting uh, a visit organized or a conference organized or something like that. So last but not least, um, um, we, and I think this comes from, from my background as former communication chairs, I think, chair, I think one of the major well, or the, the biggest values of being a member in, in the TSL society is that you are updated on recent initiatives, on call for papers, on what's going on in the journals, not only in our flagship journal, Transportation Science, but also in related journals. And um, this is an area, if you are a member of TSL, we want to make sure that you know everything that is important in transportation and logistics science, yeah, and that you know about all the opportunities and that you know what's the standard there these days and what's the game you play in academia and in, in industry as well. And I think we try to make this happen with our Twitter channel, with our news blog, with our web page, with workshops, and I think this is where I where I hope that we can also increase the value in the future and that our members will continue sharing ideas, calls for papers, calls for positions, and uh, that this uh, TSL is a one-stop uh, interface to those who want to be informed um, on all the things that are important for transportation and logistics science. So throughout the pandemic, the world at large has become much better informed about supply chain disruptions and other transportation challenges, many of which are still ongoing. Um, can you share how these are shaping work that's happening in the field of transportation and logistics? Yeah, so I think one big learning to me is that there's still this ongoing trend on data collection to, to assess the reliability and the re resilience of supply chains and transportation services in general, right? So these days, we often face the problem that we have too much data actually, and we can deal with this amount of data given our nicely formalized optimization problems. So I think there will be uh, lots of work seen in this area about where do we need to collect more data, but where do we also need uh, to focus on how to transform this data into better decisions and how do we do that. And I think 
for informs as a whole, but especially for the transportation issues in our society, we can still do, um, or we can still find interesting problems here uh, on the interface of optimization analytics and data science. Yeah. So this is this is a big thing. This has this was a big thing before before the pandemic already, but now. Uh, since the pandemic, we have so much data on all these things, on all the supply chains, on lead times. Um, and on the other hand, we have advanced optimization technology and this interface between data collection, data science and analytics. This is something that uh, if I would start my PhD right away these days, yeah, I would really jump onto one of these topics, right? So, so this is where we can also fascinate young people and uh, where you need to know a lot. Yeah, you need to, to, to have a background in analytical thinking and statistics and computer science, maybe sometimes in business, uh, in, in mathematical optimization and bringing that all together. Uh, I hope at least that we can make the world a better place a little bit with, with these kinds of methods, Yeah, especially keep the supply chains running. Yeah, so the big question to me always was, but it has become even more, how to convert all this data into information to improve decision making, yeah? and especially in the area of transportation and logistics. And we all know we need to do, we need to organize operations in an efficient manner, but also in a sustainable manner and in a reliable manner. Yeah, and I don't know, in, in, in recent years, all was about efficiency, but these days, Resilience is a big topic. Yeah, when you talk about pandemic, reliability is a big topic. And last but not least, sustainability is also a big issue. And with all this data that we have, uh, we can, I think we can make a difference. Yeah. So this is, I think, an interesting point uh, that will shape the world, the, the future of transportation and logistics. Um, so I would think maybe there's a shift from purely efficient and optimal to a compromise of reliable and efficient and sustainable somehow and um, data will play a big role what will also change and this is very interesting regarding publication habits is that journals will ask more and more about your code and the data that you used to create your results yeah so when i think back like 10 years ago when I published uh, in, 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 the, in the prestigious journals at those times, they never asked for my code or they never asked for a reproducibility of, um, of results. Yeah, But these days, this is seen as a quality, a quality indicator, excuse me. And I think at some point, journals like Transportation Science will ask more and more for your data sources, e even if it's only for the reviewers to look at them. Yeah, and I think this will be an interesting uh, tipping point in our community to think about how much effort do we want to, to, to put into all these data issues and how much effort do we have to put into methodology. And I'm looking forward to having these discussions in, in, in our society before others tell us what we have to do. Yeah, so I really prefer making our own suggestions, what we think makes sense in transportation science and logistics before others like National Science Foundation or other players tell us what we have to do to, to get funding. Jan, thank you again for joining me for this interview. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share about the society, its activities or its members before we go? Well, thank you again for having me here. I think there's one, one topic I would like to highlight at this point. And uh, this year, um, we introduced a new award. So I don't know if you, I mentioned some of our awards. So the TSL Best Paper, the TSL Best Dissertation, and there's also a TSL Lifetime Award every other year. Yeah, but we felt last year that something is missing in the middle. Yeah, and so we introduced the Stella Daphomos Mid-Career Award by this year, and I already know who, who the winner will be, yeah, so you can all be excited to go to our business meeting at the annual meeting, because we thought what happens with those colleagues that have just established their career, and um, this is why we, why you can apply when you are 10 to 20 years after your PhD, yeah, so this is a new award. It's not very well known yet. It's the first first uh, time that we hand out this award. 
and it's named by one of the famous uh, women in, in our transportation and logistics uh, society area. Yeah, so I would really invite you to go to our webpage, look at this award, and also apply if you are in the appropriate, um, let's call it uh, uh, career level. Yeah, and, and I'm looking forward to many more very good applications. So this is one thing I would like to highlight at this point, once again, repeat, that we also think about improving our younger researcher award system a little bit more. So watch out for the news and please register to, to become informed when we put something new on our blog. So I think if you're an informs member, that's quite easy. You can just uh, log in and say you like this topic, transportation science and logistics at informs connect. And then you should get hopefully interesting news to you every once in a while on what's going on in, in the society, but also around the society. And last but not least, um, we've talked a lot about diversity, about new topics, hot topics, and the structure within the society. And I just wanted to highlight members and volunteers of all ages, seniority levels, career levels, with all kinds of diverse interests are always welcome. And please don't hesitate to contact me or some other board members if you have ideas if you feel insecure about them, if you don't know where to put something, where to put your talk, where to, to, to locate your idea, please feel free to approach me at the business meeting. Just send me an email. We are always looking for new ideas to keep the society alive and up to date. And I think this interview is also a, a good chance to motivate you to become a member if you are not yet. Yeah, uh, then please become a member to be informed, but also to get in touch and volunteer for organizing a best paper committee, a workshop, or just approach me to talk about your research on in, in TSL, on TSL related topics. Thank you so much, Jan. That was great information about TSL. And I would just echo your statement to join. We are always welcoming new members, both to TSL and to Informs. To our viewers, stay tuned as we explore more of the Informs sections and societies in upcoming interviews. Oh,